Welcome back. We're speaking with Paula Bennett, Social Development Minister, about her white paper on vulnerable children. Um, Minister, SIF workers at times have been criticised uh, pretty heavily for failing children. Uh, they haven't been proactive enough in some cases. Do you have confidence and SIF? Uh, very much so and I think they uh, improve every year and um, we've had a particular um, focus on their practice of late um, with all credit actually to the, the Minister before me, Ruth Dyson, she spent um, a lot of energy and effort in getting child, youth and family to a place where it was more responsive, where it was fiscally and now I'm able to work on their practice and how they are delivering. They don't get it right 100% of the time no. but okay. these are children and it's complex and you know we can only keep improving while recognising the absolute importance okay. of the work Dame they Lizzie do. Mack, she supports your changes by and large, but she said on national radio this week that she was concerned about the quality of some social workers, that they're, in some cases, desensitised to abuse because of their background. Now, I'm stressing here that this is some social mm. workers. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's about us putting the right supervision and the right management in place. And I think with any organisation that you look at, it's only as good as um, the people that are kind of running it. So that goes right from the chief executive to myself, but then I think those managers that are in the offices, and I think we've put a lot of emphasis on that of late. And, and, and saying able that, to. when we look at, say, the North Shore, I know, for example, Takapuna has around uh, seven social workers down on stress leave at the moment, SIF workers. Uh, it's a tough job. Oh. And, and these people are under staff. Oh Rachel, it's the hardest job. It is without a doubt the hardest job and they're always working at the critical end. So I always mm. say they don't actually get a, a bit of nice light relief either. It's not like they but can sort of can do something in a day. how children in Takapuna when you've got seven people who can't do their jobs? Look, we, long -term um, stress leave, I've put 96 more social workers in, um, in, the, in the last 12 months recognising that and this is actually a huge part of it because what they're doing is trying to work with too many children at the moment. If I can narrow that down to them working with the most critical and then those children's teams and those community organisations coming in for those that are not at serious risk but still need intervention, then I can lighten their workload, give them more social workers and still get the kind of response. And it's not just SIFs that is going to be asked to do a lot more work here. A lot more resources going to have to go in across government. Mm -hmm. So far you've only committed $20 million. There's going to be tight budgets for the next three or four years. Is this stuff actually realistic in terms of funding? Well I think it's um, absolutely something that not just myself but other senior ministers have stood up and said we stand by this work, we see it as a priority and I think the biggest man has which is John Key and we have said this is where we want to put our focus in the next three years so you have seen the first chunk that gets us putting those systems in place but yes it will take more money but we can also spend what's there better. Right, so in a climate of zero budgets, continuing zero um, budget increases, that means reprioritisation of funding, doesn't it? And, and professionals are already concerned about this, taking money away from things that work. Yeah, well if throwing money was the answer to this problem, then quite frankly we would see you know, the numbers of coming down significantly through those sort of labour years, because they put significantly more money into these organisations, but we haven't seen fewer children being neglected. I think we can do better with what's there, but yes it will also take some new funds. And the other major criticism of this report has been um, the lack of anything in terms of addressing poverty. Now we know that there is a connection between poverty and child abuse so you can go through and it's not just the, the politicians that are saying this. Uh, Patrick Kelly from Starship, the NZEI, UNICEF, the New Zealand N Nurses Organisation, they're mm. all saying that you need to be doing more about this issue. There's nothing in this about poverty. Well, I agree that it is one of the causes and can be one of the it's causes. A key so cause there's though, isn't well, it? there's a number of key causes but actually, that's where and you're that can't be beneficiaries, just which one is of them. Poverty, isn't it? People well, living in poverty. Th but there's also a whole lot of other streams of work that are going on around poverty. So why would I duplicate the work of the Children's Commissioner and his expert group? Why would I duplicate the work that's going on with the Ministerial Committee on Poverty? Um, this is about dealing with those 20 to 30 thousand children that are most at risk. We have other work that's going on around the causes. But quite frankly I find it slightly offensive to say that po poverty causes child abuse because it doesn't it, but actually. It, no, it, okay, it doesn't make someone clench a fist and smack their child but it puts people under extreme strain. When you look at say a, a relationship that's under financial strain that's one of the key issues that sometimes makes a relationship go bottoms up basically. Then you get a woman on her own who's under stress with children. Then another man enters the scene and we know that in these cases you know, that can often lead mm. to child abuse, non-biological men involved in mm. a family environment. So financial strain and poverty does put a lot of pressure 
under people. But I think you've just kind of hit the nail on the head is that it's not just poverty, it's also the relationships we have, whom we let into our children's lives, but the protection we put over them. Down so well, often. I mean, it, well, everyone says that poverty is a, is a key issue in, in pretty much every case of yeah. child abuse. Poverty is a significant factor. Honestly, Rachel, if I thought throwing an extra 30 or $40 a week at beneficiaries would mean that those children were not abused and neglected, I'd be fighting with that for, with every inch that I've got. Uh, it is far more complex than that. Far more complex. Sure. So there is work that's going on around poverty, and I certainly stand by it. I welcome the Children's Commissioner's work. I want to see the report in December. There are pieces in that that we will be actioning. But this is incredibly complex. It's intergenerational. We need to be acting now on what is happening, okay. and to excuse it, I think, is just it's not but the government's, I mean, the, this, well, the research that went into this white paper itself found, I think, five out of six uh, cases of abuse came from, from um, welfare homes. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, there are government policies that are punishing um, the parents uh, who have children. Uh, beneficiary parents. Well see I disagree fundamentally of course that it's not punishing them it's actually giving them the opportunities to get off welfare and into a better life and right now they are intergenerationally staying on welfare because they don't see any, any sort of future or any cut, different thing coming. It's the children who suffer though, But we're not it? cutting them and that's, that's where well, I think if, we if need they, to be really careful. We are changing behaviours and we have to change behaviours and at the end of that there needs to be some repercussions. We are not going to do that lightly. There is going to be processes that we work through. It it is not our intention to cut the money of those that are most vulnerable, but we have to change behaviours so that we don't see another generation growing up, okay. hurt and maltreated and ending up on long-term welfare. The Children's Commissioner, Commissioner will release um, the final report, so Solutions to Child Poverty essentially. Will you take on board what he says in that about poverty? Well of course we will. I mean I've been having many discussions with him and with Jonathan Boston, with others from the group. I've read their reports, I look forward to them in December. Okay. It doesn't mean that we're going to pick up up his set menu, but it does mean that we might, okay. you know, there we might see what um, what we think works. I mean, just be, you know, because they are doing a lot of work, and I have a huge amount of respect sure. for what they're doing. I think there is frustration, though, Minister, that there's continually work going on and discussions being had, but still a, a reluctance to actually make, take action, firm action. Well, that, I couldn't agree with you more, and that's why you have the white paper okay. on vulnerable children. This is action orientated. This is actual things that will make a difference in those sure. lives of those children. You know, uh, early next year, the work really kicks off. And the, I couldn't agree with you more. I could have done another paper. I could have done something else. Well, this uh, is action among orientated. Among a lot of the submissions that came into this um, white paper, that there should be a minister for children. There should, shouldn't there? Why? So instead what you've got is joint chief executives who are actually now chief going to be legit. So, I mean, well, they're, they're it, well, quite frankly. If, if they you, are the ones that they said it children, well, You look at someone who looks at every single policy that the government introduces and thinks, what's the impact on children? I just couldn't, I just actually couldn't disagree how, how more. Is that not I just a good think idea? actually having a minister we've, for children will be... We've got a minister be, for racing. Be, yeah, exactly. We should have one for and children. And how's that lip service going? Let's actually get serious about what the results are for these kids. They cross education, health, justice, police and of course myself. I have got those five most senior ministers all standing up, being accountable for this work okay. and what happens with kids. So that's a no. That is, no minister well, for it's children. It's far bigger and better, quite frankly, than the title of minister for children. That all seems a bit wishy-washy to me. All right, social development minister Paula Bennett. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.